Jesus said, my gospel, my kingdom, if you're going to enter my kingdom, it is a narrow way. It is a narrow mind. You know, some, you know the term narrow-minded? Oh, you're so narrow-minded, brother. You, ha, well, the way to heaven is narrow-minded. Jesus said it himself. It is a narrow-minded, a narrow heartfelt. It's a narrow way. It's a na And sadly, he says, few find it. Ha, few find it. But the sad fact is, many multitudes of people are going to miss out on the kingdom of God. Listen, if his own people that he called unto himself and he proved himself mighty and powerful, displaying all his signs and wonders, his power and his glory, how he led them triumphantly uh, with Moses out of the, uh, Egypt, out of bondage, out of captivity, into the promised land, yet they still forsake him, forsook him. They still replaced him with other gods and ways of living. Uh, and if... if, if um, you know, if, if these people still, Jesus said, when he walked, he says, you've missed the hour of your visitation. You have missed the hour of the visitation of God that has been given to you, that has been handed to you. These people were handed the gospel. They were handed the rights to be the, the very children of God. And thank God that now it's been open unto you and me. Amen. That, uh, you know, that we have been grafted into the vine. And he sent his disciples. He said, now you go out. Just as I have been going out, you go out in my name, representing part of me, no, all of me, all that I am, and go and lay hands upon the sick, preach the gospel, raise the dead. Amen. It's the same power in Ephesians. It is the same power that raised Jesus from the dead, that raises your mortal body and gives life to your dead body in sin and makes quickens it and brings it to life. Hey, if we are born again, the old man is dead. It's, it's, it's dead. We are born again as a new man. But people say, oh, but you know, you sure we fight sin? Sure we've got temptation? You know, but we've got something more powerful to fight it with. Greater is he in you than he that is in the world. Who's in the world? The devil, the ways of the world. Antichrist is in the world. And the spirit of Antichrist is in the world against the kingdom. The kingdom of darkness is against the kingdom of light. But we are not of the kingdom of darkness, Paul says. If we were of the kingdom of darkness, we would act and behave and live like uh, uh, the, the uh, people of darkness. But we are now called into light. Isaiah 61, arise and shine, your light has come. And the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Well, has it risen or has it not? <laughs> if it has risen, then we have risen with it. The same power that raised Jesus raises us up into, light, into the light and the glory. Paul says, the completeness and the perfection of Christ, of God. But with the right tools, the job has become easy. God has given us his tools. God has given us the gifts of the Holy Spirit. God has empowered you and he says, arise and shine. You are complete. <laughs> In fact, when we come through the cross of Jesus, we're, before that we're incomplete because sin has made its toll. Sin has, the devil, the Bible says, the devil comes to steal, to kill, to destroy. Uh, but Jesus came to bring life and abundant life, everlasting life, fullness of life, the full measure of life is made available unto us. And when we come through the cross, the blood of Jesus washes us, cleanses us. You know that it breaks the curse of sin. And he says, guys, stop sinning. You can't sin. In fact, he says, the Holy Spirit comes to sanctify us, body, soul, and spirit. That's the whole, that's, that's us, all part of us. That we can, we can step in to this holiness, this sanctification. And when the blood of Jesus was shed, and we come and surrender unto God and we are born again into his family out of darkness into light. This curse of sin is broken over our life. What does that mean? It means that the curse of sin is broken over our life. What does that mean? It means the curse of sin is broken over our life. It means that the outcome, the working of sin, the curse is broken. That we are no longer under bondage. We are now set free as a child of God. Listen, if we're born again, we're born again. 
the old life is gone, finished, done. The imperishable human nature, natural seed is dead, killed, gone, finished. And the seed of God is planted in us, which is holy and righteous and powerful. Psalm 36, verse 7 and 9 says this. How priceless is your unfailing love. Both high and low among men find refuge in the shadow of your wings. They feast on the abundance of your house. You give drink from your river of delights. For with you is the fountain of life. And in your light, we see light. Psalm 36. There's a place of abundance. Open wide. And you know how I believe God longs for each of us to come into that innermost place. That come in, um, to that place that he's standing with his arms open wide. Say, come, come into my presence. Come into my arms. A beautiful hymn, there is a place of quiet rest. Near to the heart of God. A place where sin cannot molest. Near to the heart of God. You don't need to be in a third world country. You, you know, you can be in any country, any nationality, uh, any village, any any town, any city. And you see people, their heart is the same. They are longing for happiness. They are longing for love. They are longing for fulfillment and for satisfaction. But the problem is they uh, are led by blind guides and, and many of them are blind themselves and they stumble and they fall and they make wrong turns and wrong decisions in search and in desperation to be accepted and to be loved. And all the time God stands over and says, arms open wide, says, come unto me. That's why he died, for our peace. That heaven can be open, that the favour of God can now enter into your hearts the joy and the love and the peace of God Almighty can enter into your heart body and soul God says open your mouth and I will fill it David says Lord open my eyes that I might behold wondrous things in your law in your word what do you hunger for what is primarily the greatest desire in your life? What is worth, what is priceless unto him is he that hungers and thirsts after righteousness, after right standing, that does whatever it takes, that, that makes changes whatever needs to be changed, uh, decisions whatever needs to be made, to put yourself I used to say, get under the spout where the glory's coming out. Get under the spout where the glory's coming out. Get your life in a position that is honouring to God. That is, will attract the favour. And, and I preached about prayer, about praying in Christ, in, in Jesus. And Jesus talks about in, in John's Gospel 15, 14, 15, talks about come into the Father's love and remain in that Father's love with me. What an invitation. Has there ever been given such a powerful invitation unto mankind that God the Father and His Son, Jesus Christ, has an open door as inviting you that Jesus, the Son of God, says, come close to me. Let us enter and remain and stay in the presence of my Father and remain in His love with me. For on your own, you can do nothing. But you must be grafted in. You must be living in the vine. Connected to the vine. To, that the, the roots need to be established. And Paul says it is my desire, my prayer, that you come to intimately, passionately understand and know the deep, deep, deep love of God. It's because of his kindness that he holds back a little longer. For the sinful man takes pride and arrogance in his position. He says, where is God? As he boasts of his feats and his sin. 
and selfishness and greed. And because God does not strike him dead at this time, he thinks he is safe. But it is the God's grace and mercy that withholds his hand upon many a life today in this world. Because if he was to touch, we would be no more. He would be destroyed. Our sin would condemn us. And there would be no hope into eternity. But it is his grace, his loving kindness that woos us, that invites us, that calls us. O oh, sinner, come home. You who are weary, come home. Earnestly, tenderly, Jesus is calling. O oh, sinner, O oh, sinner, come home.